This question says prove that the square of any natural number is either a multiple of 3 or 1 more than a multiple of 3. This is an exam question from a past paper and it's worth 4 marks. When you get an algebraic proof question like this and it says something like the square of any natural number, you want to think about how you can represent the natural numbers as an expression and then think about squaring that and what you would get as the result. Now because we're squaring the natural numbers and we want to prove that it's a multiple of 3 or 1 more than a multiple of 3, we want to represent the natural numbers somehow in terms of multiples of 3. So let's firstly look at a list of numbers from 1 to 9 and let's consider how these numbers relate to multiples of 3. Well, 1, we could say is 1 more than a multiple of 3. 0 is a multiple of 3, right? 0 times 3 is 0. 2 is 1 less than a multiple of 3. 3 is, of course, a multiple of 3. 4 is 1 more than that. 5 is 1 less than a multiple of 3. 6, 2 times 3. 7 is 1 more than that. 8 is 1 less than a multiple of 3. And then we're again back to 3 times 3. So what am I getting at here? Well, we can represent any natural number as either a multiple of 3, 1 more than a multiple of 3, or 1 less than a multiple of 3. So that's the key observation you need to make here uh, in order to answer this question. It is difficult coming up with these observations, uh, but the, the clue is usually in the question. If they're talking about things like natural numbers to do with 3, think about how you can represent numbers, the natural numbers, in terms of, in this case, multiples of 3 or whatever number they're talking about in the question. Once we have this observation, it should be fairly straightforward from here. So we can say that we can represent all natural numbers as either 3k, so that's a multiple of 3, 3k plus 1, or 3k take 1. These are the algebraic expressions representing this observation we've made. Okay, let's consider firstly the cases where we have either a number greater than a multiple of 3 or less than a multiple of 3. And we can do those in one go. So we can write 3k plus or minus 1 squared and we'll see what we get. So expanding these brackets out, this would be 9k squared plus or minus 6k depending on which sign you use and then plus 1. It's always going to be a plus 1 whether we have plus or minus in there, it's always going to be a plus 1 on the end. And then this 9k squared plus or minus 6k, we can factorize a 3 out of that and we get 3 multiplied by 3k squared plus or minus 2k plus 1. This expression represents a multiple of 3 plus 1. So this is always 1 more than a multiple of 3. That's what that expression represents. Okay, so that's the case where we've got a natural number and it's either one more or one less than a multiple of three. What if we have a multiple of three and we square that? Well, that's pretty straightforward, right? So we'd have 3k squared, that's 9k squared, that's clearly a multiple of three. Go back to the question, we need to show it's either a multiple of three or one more than that. And we've done that with that working out there. So we can finish our proof by saying, therefore, the square of any natural number is either a multiple of 3 or 1 more than a multiple of 3. So there you go. That's about all the working out you needed for that question. I don't want to make it seem like this is obvious. Making these types of observations is not easy, but it does come with practice. Once you've done a number of these algebraic proof questions, you do sort of see like how to begin them and, and the types of methods you need to use. Uh, so I would say uh, with practice, this does get easier. Question two. Now that first question was an actual exam question, not written by me. These next two questions I made up, so they might not be quite as good as the first one, but I hope they're still useful. So this question says, given that a and b are natural numbers, prove that a squared plus b squared is only a multiple of three if both a and b are multiples of three. Think about what we just proved. We proved that the square of any natural number is either a multiple of three or one more than that. So what are our options here for a squared plus b squared? Well, a squared could either be a multiple of 3 or 1 more than that, and the same with b squared. So let's firstly consider the case where they're both not multiples of 3. So they could be both 1 more than or 1 less than a multiple of 3. So let's consider that case. We had, for example, 3p plus or minus 1, 
and then 3 cubed plus or minus 1, we square those. Now they're both going to be, as we just proved, 1 more than a multiple of 3. So what would the result be then? We'd have a multiple of 3, which I've said is 3m. You can use any letters here, by the way. It doesn't really matter what letters you use. That's just saying this number will be a multiple of 3. But we'd have plus 2 on the end, right? Because both of these are 1 more than a multiple of 3. We need to add those two ones together and we get plus 2. In other words, a remainder of 2. And this is clearly not a multiple of 3. What are our other options? Well, we could have A being 1 more or 1 less than a multiple of 3 and then maybe B is a multiple of 3. So let's consider that option. So A we could represent as 3P plus or minus 1 squared and then b is a multiple of 3, so that's 3q squared. But here, a squared is going to be a multiple of 3 plus 1. Okay, so when we add these together, we're going to get a multiple of 3, but we're always going to have a remainder of 1, which I've represented as 3m plus 1. So because we have that remainder of 1 on the end, it's never going to be a multiple of 3. Okay, now the only other option that we haven't considered yet is if a and b are both multiples of 3. And if we add two multiples of 3, clearly the result is going to be a multiple of 3. And in fact, that's what the statement says, right? So this is enough to say that therefore a squared plus b squared equals a multiple of 3 only if both a and b are multiples of 3. Okay, so that's how you could answer uh, that type of question. The last question was an always, sometimes, never proof. So this question says, Richard states that a squared plus b squared is only a multiple of n if both a and b are multiples of n. State giving reason whether this is always true, sometimes true, or never true. I put two marks here because there's a bit of interpretation that you need to do in the question. But once you've interpreted the question correctly, I don't think it's really too challenging. So what we want to do here is to use a counter example. So can you think of two numbers, if you square them and add them, that the result is not a multiple of the numbers you used? So let's pick, you know, the first two numbers, the first two counting numbers, 1 and 2. So 1 squared plus 2 squared is 5. 1 and 2 are not multiples of 5, but 1 squared plus 2 squared is a multiple of 5. So let's read this statement again. Richard states that a squared plus b squared is only a multiple of n if both a and b are multiples of n. So what if we said n was 5? Well, 1 squared plus 2 squared is 5, but a and b, in this case 1 and 2, are not multiples of 5. So clearly, for this example, this statement is not true. Okay, so uh, this, therefore this statement is only sometimes true. For example, if n is 5, it's not true, but it is true if n is 3, as we have shown in question 2. So for that question, you just needed to give a counterexample. Uh, there are many other examples you could give. For example, if you did uh, 3 squared plus 2 squared, what would that be? That would be 9 plus 4, that's 13. 9 and 4 are not multiples of 13, but you get a result, which is a multiple of 13. So that's another counterexample. So often it's really useful when you get these always, sometimes, never questions to use counterexamples to prove that they're not always true. Okay, there is some algebraic proof questions. I hope you found that useful. See you in the next one. Bye for now.